how did Cliff Wharton and I meet? Uh, I was visiting a friend, I was visiting the cousin, uh, Betty Fitzgerald, in Boston. I was living in Danbury, Connecticut. Uh, and uh, there are two stories here. There's my story and there's Cliff's story. <laughs> my story is that we met at Harvard Yard, because Cliff was going to be my blind date at a dance, a Radcliffe dance, where Betty was in school. And I was spending the night with her on campus. Uh, and Cliff was there, and he, we w went up to Har and there at Harvard Yard, and he said, mm-hmm, yeah, she's pretty. Come on, let's go. <laughs> uh-huh, yes, he did. Uh, <laughs> and he was BM, he BMC. BMOC, yeah. BMOC, big mm -hmm. man on campus. He was. Mm -hmm. And he just strutted along. We kind of strutted after him. And that was uh, sort of the beginning of it all. Uh-huh. And did you, did you, were you o overpowered by his magnetism and no I, <laughs> no I wouldn't say that <laughs> uh-huh no. okay I was from New York <laughs> straightforward answer right. okay right. and Cliff what is your well my my uh, version of the story is that um, the same cousin uh, Betty Fitzgerald had had a party in her home the year before and Dolores was visiting and um, this, I guess it was Betty's first party, she said, I guess, anyway. But uh, she all, yeah, all of the Boston boys in my group were absolutely circled around this gorgeous thing with long hair and so on, and looked like an absolute portion of a doll, and they were just crazy about it, you know. I said to myself, who the devil is this, you know, kind of thing. Um, then when uh, Betty asked me to take uh, Dolores to the dance, which uh, I did, um, she was my, my date, and uh, I don't think we dated again for several years. My roommate dated her, Harold May did, um, so we interacted in that fashion. Um, when I was at Tuskegee, I, I guess I wrote to her a couple of times and sent her my, my fly boy he picture. He has a wonderful picture in, in, with the, the lambskin collar on the leather coat jacket mm -hmm. and the hat with the, with the uh, goggles. Yeah. Very handsome. So I said, I, I, I gather said, he sent that to several young people. Yeah. So um, <laughs> now, but we did not, we did not, literally, we did not date again until I was here in New York working for uh, Nelson Rockefeller. And the same cousin was coming to New York and she said, Would I pick up Dolores and meet her at the train station to help with the bags? And so I said, Okay, fine. So I picked up Dolores and we went down to the train station. And um, I was very intrigued because um, somehow in my mind she had changed a great deal since the days when I had that one date with her. And, um, changed how? Uh, she was um, much more mature. Um, uh, she was still just as stunningly attractive. And um, the, uh, so the net result was that, oh, that's right, she and uh, Betty were having a dates with... Uh, two West Point cadets that weekend. And uh, they came back after the date, and I saw them, and Dolores and Betty both had gotten pins, I guess. They, oh, you had gotten a pin from the cadet who was... The A-pin, uh, the, the Army pin. pin. Yeah, mm -hmm. from... Um, um, I can't remember his name. I wouldn't yeah, but anyway, but, And so um, I, said, <laughs> I said to Dolores... Well, this she, was after a, a, a week or two. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I told you I'd send that pin back. You should send it back to that little boy. <laughs> that little boy. Yes, he so, did. So I did. And uh, Dolores had several uh, bows in that day, and I just kind of gradually knocked all of them off, and we dated. We had a, lo we we had had a lovely we had spring. A, we had a great courtship. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. It was just incredible. beautiful. Here yeah. in all in New York. Yeah. And, it was uh, lovely. So a year later, uh, we, were, we were married in uh, Miss and Marion Anderson's studio. Uh, it was a big wedding. Uh, and um, it was a great, it was a great wedding, great courtship and a great wedding, and a fantastic marriage. Yeah. Well, clearly, it, how many years has it been now? It's coming up on April. fifty-three in April. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's amazing. I will not ask you what the secret is now. I'll wait until the end of the interview, and then I will ask you what the secret is. But um, Dolores, when you when you were um, marrying Cliff and uh, you were a young bride and thinking about the future. What kind of life did you envisage for the two of you? And did you see yourself in uh, the kind of traditional role that a lot of women of a certain generation were expected to fill? They were going to be 
a reflection of who, whatever male they marry. For me, it was a very important aspect of the, 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 the marriage, the relationship, and the roles. Uh, you have to do that. I did feel that as a black and as a, as, a, as a woman, but as a black woman, that it was also helpful to me to show that I was a happily married woman. Women are concerned about other women next to their husbands. They really are. And, and when, certainly attractive women next to they, their husbands. They, yes. they, they, it, uh, there were signs that this was not always easily accepted. I, you know, I recognize the signs. You know when it's going on. And I wanted to show it was, it was important for me to be able to let them know that I have a very handsome, gorgeous husband that I'm very, very much in love with. And there's no reason for them to get upset with their husbands when I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> no comparison. And you weren't worried about him no. wandering off with all of these women. Oh, I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> I thought it was great. It was fun. It, this is unusual This in, in, in most marriages. You don't normally hear of the male spouse mm. going off and, and, and being the spouse of. Yeah. They that, don't. People really don't know what goes on in the boardroom. They don't know. And so who's going to tell them? You don't have to tell them. Mm. But it is an interesting culture, mm. what goes yeah. on in the boardroom. It's different from what most people know about. What does that say, what does the arrangement say and the willingness to do this say about how you, you all have worked out your marriage? I don't know what you mean exactly. Well, it's, it's that we recognize that in many instances our willingness to engage in supportive roles vis-a-vis -vis each other oh, okay. strengthens the marriage and strengthens our respective roles. So that whether it's Dolores standing up and con being confronted by the students and dealing with them. That was supportive of my role as president. She wasn't being lady president. She was supportive. No, I, did, I never she went didn't, into the president's office. She didn't go into the president's office, office and tell me how I didn't go into the West Wing. Yeah, see? <laughs> but she was playing a supportive role. Uh, similarly, um, it, when I perform the role of spouse, I'm being supportive of her role at that place. Um, and it, um, and that's, that's important, and it created, and I think over the years, has created a, a much greater degree of both mutual respect and strength in the marriage. She has grown as I have grown. Uh, she has had her independent role, I've had my independent role, but we have been supportive in each other's in those roles. So that when she has her Fund for Corporate Initiatives, I will participate in it to the best of my ability, but it's her activity. Similarly, when I had my program of uh, rotating special assistants at, at TI Crep to bring along the mid-level people in our company, they came and participated in her program at TI. Yeah, also, going back to the Singapore Kuala Lumpur days when Art Mosia let the wives go out with their husbands when they were traveling all over Asia, this was very important that I be able to do this and got to know Asia with, along with Cliff and grew with him. Mm -hmm. This is very important. When these, when these young men go to college and the women's working as a secretary to get these guys through college. And they're, just, they're still at the secretary level. And they've grown up and then, they, then the nurses come after them. Not good. <laughs> it's, it's a... It, Being very, yeah, there very is, there is a, frank. You know, Dolores' point is very important. Yeah. There, there has to be, or should be, ought to be, a, a level of mutual growth mm. that is among marriages. I've seen many cases, unfortunately, where, particularly with the women, who start off with an equal level of training, preparation, education, degrees, and so on, but they are not allowed or encouraged to grow at the same time that the male grows. And then next thing you know, after a few years, the first wife is dumped, and here comes the trophy wife. Uh, it's, and it's very sad, because uh, it's not because the, the first wife was lacking any skills or competency to begin with. To begin with, it was that they were never given a chance to to to, to grow along. It didn't have to be that they grow along as an adjunct to the male, but that they have a chance to grow. Uh, and that I would say, in Dolores's case, in my case, that's never been the case. We we've both grown together. Is that a result of of 
Did you all come out of your parents' marriages with that kind of example? <laughs> of <it>? No. <laughs> No. Not at all. No. Really? No. 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 I, I would say that to a great extent it came out of um, the fact that, that the two of us have always had, well, we have been um, phenomenally in love with each other from the very beginning. And secondly, the experience that we were given as the opportunity in Asia by Art Mosier in ADC, where she was given the opportunity to grow and I was given. And then you become, you become aware of what that means for, for both. And then we just followed it right straight through. Mm -hmm.